So now, in this video, pretty simple demonstration here. It is basically a night light circuit there. You can see the LED is not on until I turn the lamp off right there and turn the power on. So I am actually reshooting this scene and I turn the power off. Uh, there you can see lamp on, LED off, lamp off, LED on, night light right there. So we uh, will zoom in and take a look at uh, how this circuit works right there. So we have, as I said, the LED module, and um, that's why I had the uh, power turned off. These get really hot uh, pretty quickly, so I don't want it to be on for any period of time before I touch it. These uh, little modules, I can't remember how much they cost. Uh, maybe it's like 50 cents or something each if you buy a bunch of them, but uh, they don't have wires attached to them. I wired them and didn't do a great job, but in uh, any case, we, uh, we have that. There's the LED and the resistor on the heat sink right there. So I call it a module because it's a number of components, you know, only two really, um, combined together plus the heat sink. So it's, you know, relatively bright. Oops. Um, yeah, I did turn the power back on and I meant to turn the lamp on. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, fairly bright right there for a small area. So in any case, it's a lot more current than I normally uh, use in my videos. About 200 milliamps of current. So the math isn't too complex on that. It's five volts. You just put five volts across it and you could do a lower voltage for, you know, dimmer light. Um, but for the most part, put five volts across it. It's going to let 200 milliamps of current flow through it. 200 milliamps of current is the same as 0.2 amps. So five volts times 0.2 is one, one watt right there. So that's why I'm using the 2N2222, the A version. Um, that's what that is. Most of the new ones are A versions. So, if not all of them. The reason why I didn't use the 2N3904, it only switches about 200 milliamps of current. So, that's what we're switching. That's its maximum, absolute maximum. So, it's going to get quite hot. You know, maybe it won't uh, be destroyed. Maybe it'll get destroyed quick or something. Um, you know, who, who knows? So, in any case, better just to use a transistor that can handle at least twice the current. And the 2N2222 the A or not A version, can switch up to about 600 milliamps of current. So, much better option there. Now, we need a significant amount of uh, base 2 emitter current in order to do so. And uh, so, wiring up a signal source that can do that is a bit uh, tricky. So, we wired this uh, 2N2222, it's an NPN bipolar junction transistor, with another NPN bipolar junction transistor. So this one you got more leeway. Um, if it's uh, not a 2N NPN bipolar junction transistor though, then I may have a different uh, pin layout. Be aware of that, if it doesn't start with 2N. But all the ones I have that start with 2N have the same pin layout. So this one doesn't have to be a 2N 2222 because we don't, we're not gonna put near as much current through it. As you can see, we got that 330 ohm resistor right there. And um, so we have our load it's about 200 milliamps of current right there. The uh, 2N2222, or uh, pretty much any, where I shouldn't say any, but uh, most transistors, they generally have a gain of at least 100, which means if you put one milliamp of current through the transistor, it's guaranteed to let at least 100 milliamps of current flow through the collector. So right now it's not letting current flow. That's uh, what it's doing. It's called cut off. There's no base to emitter current, so it's not going to let collector to emitter current flow. So, um, again, I hit the wrong button, turned off the power supply, but it turned it back on. There you can see, right now, the transistor is probably not conducting 100%. It could be, but, uh, you know, relatively close. It's letting current flow through it. Now it's more like a piece of wire. Now it's more like an off switch right there. So, when it's conducting freely, that is called saturated. The transistor has enough base to emitter current to allow current to flow through it freely up to a point, you know, up to what the gain is. So 200 milliamps of current for this load, we probably want at least two milliamps of current from base to emitter right there. So that's kind of tricky with this up. You can see I got a 4.7 K resistor there, 4,700 ohms coming from the positive supply. So with five volts, we're not gonna get anywhere near two milliamps current. So that's why we got this transistor right there. We just need about, you know, worst case scenario, 
1% of 2 milliamps of current, so 0 0.02 milliamps. You know, so I'm not going to do the math on the amps on that one. Um, but yeah, very little current, but we do need to get that current flowing. So this uh, resistor there, the 4.7K, we can move over there. Uh, that's to the positive supply right there. I know I kind of got it uh, covered up, but I got the schematic off to the right there. And uh, both of these NPN bipolar junction transistors, 2N2222, are facing to the right. So left pin would be emitter, middle pin base, top pin collector, pin on the right. And then uh, down there, emitter base collector. Same with that one right there. Going to the negative supply. So the pull-up resistor naturally wants to get a little bit of base to emitter uh, current right there. You do have a couple of diode drops to contend with right there. But uh, you got 5 volts minus about 1.4 volts due to the two drops. You know, it's like 0.7, maybe 0.6 uh, volts. But you got to keep that in mind. So, in any case, you can just keep, you know, adjusting the resistor value for making sure they turn on good enough. And also for what the light dependent resistors are going to do. So we'll get to that. So this is naturally trying to keep the transistor on. So the light dependent resistors, when they get enough light on them, they want to turn the transistor off. So that's what we got right now. They're keeping the transistor off. Now they're on right there. So if I remove just one of them, um, there you can see, we have too much resistance right now in order to uh, turn this off. And lamp is at the brightest setting. So that's why I added the second light dependent resistor there. So now they are parallel. And of course I can cover it up to get that effect too, which you may want. Maybe uh, if you got uh, you, something gets covered, you want an alarm or something, you know, you could, you could do that as well. So in any case, we got two of them. The uh, light dependent resistor, it's a resistor, but its resistance is based on light. So more light falls on it, its resistance goes down. And there are, you know, other uh, light dependent resistors. I got some, the, uh, the front, looks different the number of wiggly lines on it uh, is different and and their width and stuff they do have a different resistance but still the amount of resistance varies on light so just be aware of that if you swap one of these out for another one but uh, they all have the same basic principle of there's uh, less resistance when it is bright more resistance when it is dark, although the exact resistance might be a little bit different for a different one. So with uh, one resistor, it's going to let through a certain amount of current, in this case based on light, based on its uh, resistance. When you add a parallel one, that's also going to let that same amount of current go through if they are the same uh, type of LDR and uh, if they're getting the same amount of light falling out. You can see we do have these kind of facing different directions because it's a little crowded. So they might vary a, a bit, but for the most part, for a certain amount of light, we're gonna get about twice as much current as a lone light dependent resistor will. So that current is flowing through the 4.7K resistor. And if there's enough, uh, you know, above 1.2 uh, probably volts, right there. Some of it will flow through the transistors and start turning the load on a little bit. And we had that if there's just one. Just one doesn't have a low enough resistance to get all that current to ground to keep the voltage below about 1.2 volts. But then when we add the other one, that's going to take that extra uh, current needed to turn these off completely. So yeah, if uh, this still wasn't sensitive enough, um, we could change the value of that resistor as well. But uh, we could use a third one and so on. So I made this circuit a long time ago. Not sure exactly why I picked 4.7 uh, uh, K, 4,700 ohm resistor right there. Um, but again, you can use that value to adjust the uh, voltage divider. So now, in summary, we have a load that needs a fair amount of current, about 200 milliamps of current. Uh, so you wanna make sure you use a transistor that can handle that. Check the data sheet. Also check for gain. If the gain's not high enough, you may need to, you may need to make a Darlington pair where you have one transistor providing a relatively low, but not super low current to that transistor because uh, a super low amount of current won't turn a load on completely. So be aware of that. 
Um, so Darlington pair is common. You do have that uh, double base emitter drop to contend with. So in any case, uh, you set the actual current when it's on fully with the resistor right there. 330 ohms uh, must have provided enough uh, current to get this to turn on fully. If it, uh, it's not past enough current, you could use a lower value resistor right there. Again, don't over go over the wattage limit of the resistor. And you can adjust the sensitivity with uh, the fixed resistor here and how many uh, light dependent resistors you use right there for your variable, your light dependency part of it. But again, there's probably limits uh, with that as well. So you got to figure that out when you're designing the circuit. Um, but hopefully, if uh, you really want to make the circuit, this circuit works for you just as it is. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I post on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.